Welcome everyone. Now in this video, we are going to talk about the debugger tool of the IntelliJ. But before we start using the debugger of the IntelliJ, first you need to understand what the definition of debugging is. So debugging, it means the process of identifying and fixing the errors or the bugs within our codes. So right after finish writing your codes in order to make sure that there is no bug uh, in your codes, your codes are working as expected, you need to debug it, okay? So by debugging, we will be able to, uh, we will be able to determine whether there is a bug or error within our codes. And IntelliJ has this debugger tool. It's a powerful tool that can help the programmers to debug their codes. So after you finish writing your codes in IntelliJ, you could use the debugger of the IntelliJ, step through your codes line by line to see whether it met with the expected result or not, okay? To make sure that there is no box at each of the lines of your codes. Since you can step through line by line, it is easier to detect if there is an error or if there is a bug, then you can uh, go back to your codes and fix it, okay? So for example, in the previous video, we worked on the multi-branch if statements task, and we created this multi-branch if statement here. We have if block, else if block, and else block, right? And in order to determine which one of those block gets executed and what will be the output of each of those lines of codes, I could use the debugger. To use the debugger, first you need to set the breakpoints within your codes, okay? So if you look at the, the gutter section here, we do have the line numbers, right? So our main method started from line five. So if I want to uh, debug the entire main method, I could uh, set the breakpoint starting from here. But if you want to debug the specific lines of your codes, you could set the debugger starting from that line of your code. Now you see, when I move my mouse over to line six, it, it's not allowing me to give the breakpoint. But as soon as I move it to line seven, you see that? This big red dot means the breakpoint, okay? So it is allowing me to set the breakpoint starting from line seven, right? Because we do have code fragments at line seven. And what if I move the mouse over to line eight? Still, I don't have the uh, breakpoint that I can set. And line nine, I have it, right? So if I want to debug this, uh, this multi-branch if, since it started from line nine, I can set the uh, breakpoint starting from the line number nine. I can just click this line number nine, you see? it set the breakpoint for me, for me, okay? And I want to debug it starting from line nine to line 15, okay? So I want to debug this piece of codes that I have within this class. So right after you set the breakpoints, next step you could click this button, which, is, which will uh, run the debugger. This is one way to run the debugger. And the other way is, when you click this run option, you see, you also have the debug, this debug, uh, debug option, right? Run it as debug, you see? And the third way of running it as debug is when you do the right click, you also have this debug. So either one of them will work. So please uh, run the debugger. Once you run the debugger, it took you to the debugger window. In the debugger window, you do have, you see, console, variables, and frame those uh, sub windows. And from the debugger, I want you to make some adjustments because you do not need this frame window. You only need the variables and consoles window to determine what the value of, uh, of the variable is during each line and to see what the output will be on the console. We only need those two windows, okay? So if you click this uh, layout settings here, you see right now, in mine, it is selecting frames, variables, and consoles. I don't need these frames, okay? Usually you don't use the frames when you are debugging. You only, most of the time, I, uh, you only end up using variables and console. So please unselect these frames and make sure that only variables and consoles are selected. And also, I want you to put the console on the left window to make it easier for you to see what the output is. The variable window should be on the left, 
and the console window should be on the right. Okay, so this is my console window and this is my variable window of the debugger. And now, in this debugger window, you, you have this button step over. So every time when you click this button step over, it is going to show you what, what's happening at each of those lines. Okay, so my debugger is started from line nine, you see, debugger is showing me that this numbers value is, at line nine is zero. The debugger is showing me right now. And if I click the step over, if, z if zero this condition is, if the number is zero, this condition is false, that means, uh, that means the line, the next line, the line number 10 will not get executed. So it directly jumped to the line number 11. On the console, you see, I don't have anything right now on the console because this first if block condition is failed, okay? And if I click the step over again, it is going to tell me whether this condition was true or false. If this condition was true, it, it would uh, step over to the line number 12. Otherwise, it will step over to the line number 13. So I could click the step over. Now you see, it directly jumped to the else statements body because if and else if those conditions were false. And if I click step over again, you see, on the console of the debugger, I got zero. So you are you are able to use the step over button one uh, to step through line by line to see what the output of each of those lines of codes are. And you are also able to see what the value of the variable is in this variable window. In the variable window, you see numbers value is zero, okay? So this is how we use the debugger. So make sure that your variable window is on the left in the debugger window and console is on the right. So that next time you, it is easier for you to see what the output of each of the lines of the codes on the console. And let's also run the debugger on the other class that we had. So after finish using the debugger, if you click step over one more time, now the debugger is terminated. I want to debug the watermelon task that we previously have completed. In this task, we had uh, three single if statements, right? I want to debug all those three single if statements. So I will set the breakpoint starting from line nine to line 20. And now let me run the debugger. So as you can see right now on the variable window, it stated that we have two variables. One is number, the other one is, is enough, which is Boolean, right? I could click the step over to see what the value of each of those variable and each of those lines of codes are. So when I click the step over, this, this condition and become true because number was 40, 40 was greater or equal to 20. That's why when I click the step over, it stepped over to the body of this if statement. And if I, uh, which means it printed this code fragment on the console when this if statement got executed. At the same time, you see, the variable is enough. As soon as I click it, step over, it become true. After the if statement, after this if statement got executed, this variable is enough, become true. If variable is enough is true, and if I'm using the, that variable, Boolean variable in this if statements expression, that means this condition is also evaluated to true, as you can see it here. And when I click the step over, it steps over to the, to this if statements body. Therefore, good job is printed now on console. And then uh, if I if I click the step over, you see it now it's debugging this line number 18. In the line number 18, we do have this logical not operator and the Boolean variable is enough, which is true. So like when you apply the logical uh, not operator to the true, it becomes false. So when I click the step over, it's not going to step over to the body of this if statement and it terminates the debugger afterwards. You will be able to see what the output of each lines of your codes in the console window of your debugger. So it is uh, more convenient to use the debugger when you want to, uh, to find the bug or identify the errors that you have within your codes. Make sure that you use the debugger more often to get more comfortable with this tool. Later on when we cover the loops, we will be using the debugger more often. Thank you so much, everyone. See you all in the next video.